Hello friends, this video on neat ray optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 18. So here we have an assertion reasoning question. So we have two statements, assertion and reason. We have to tell if both the statements are true, if both the statements are false, if one of these is true. So assertion says the resolving power of a telescope is more if the diameter of the objective lens is more. So how do we find out resolving power of a telescope? Now before that, what is resolving power? In layman's terms, it is that the ability of the telescope to distinctly show two very closely located points, right? So that's resolving power. Now, how do we calculate it? This is equal to A divided by 1.22 lambda, where A is the diameter of the objective lens of the telescope. And what is lambda? Lambda is the wavelength of light that is used. Now, looking at this expression, it is very clear that if the diameter of the objective lens is more, then the resolving power of the telescope will also be more. So, obviously, the assertion is correct. Now, what is the reason behind this? Like, from where do we get this expression? So, here the reason is objective lens of di large diameter collects more light. Now, that's very obvious. So, if the lens is of more diameter, that means the lens is more thick. So the lens will allow more light to pass through it. Now when more light is collected by the lens, that means the image formed will be more bright. And as a result, the resolving power of the telescope will also be more. So in this case, we can say that the assertion is correct. The reason is also correct. And the reason is the correct reason of the assertion. So correct option is A. Question number 19. An object is placed at a distance of 10 cm from a coaxial combination of two lenses A and B in contact. Okay, The combination forms a real image three times the size of the object. If lens B is concave with a focal length of 30 cm, the nature and focal length of lens A is. So first of all, let us talk about the overall combination. So let us forget about the individual lens, but overall, if you look at the combination of the lens, it forms an image, a real image in fact, which is three times the size of the object. So we know that magnification is equal to minus V by U, which is also equal to height of image by height of object. So this is equal to three by one as per this question. Now, since this is real image, that means the image is also inverted, right? So from this, we get V is equal to 3u. So this is one expression that we get. Now in the question it is also given that the object is placed at a distance of 10 centimeters. That means u is equal to 10 centimeters. So the value of v would be equal to 30 centimeters. That means when you consider the combination of the two lenses as a whole, in that case the image will be formed at a distance of 30 centimeters from the combination of lenses. Okay. Now let us try to calculate the focal length of this combination of lenses. So we will make use of the lens formula that is 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. So 1 by v is 30 minus 1 by u, u is minus 10 because the object is located towards the negative x axis. So this will be equal to 1 by 30 plus 1 by 10, so which is equal to 4 by 30. So therefore, now what we understand from this, so from this we see that in this case, like in the overall combination, a real and inverted image is formed, right? Because of which the u is negative in this case, the v is positive in this case. Now let's get back to the concept of combination of lenses. Now you have two lenses in this case. Let's say that the focal length of one lens is f1, focal length of other lens is f2. So the overall focal length of the combination will be equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. Now the value of this overall focal length we have just now found out as 4 by 30. So this is 4 by 30. And this is equal to 1 by f1. And what is f2? Because lens A we do not know. So f1 is something we want to find. But for lens B we already know. So the lens B is a concave lens and focal length is 30. So for concave lens focal length is always negative. And for convex lens focal length is always positive. So therefore in this case the focal length will be minus 30. Or we can say 1 by f1 is equal to 4 by 30 plus 1 by 30 which is equal to 5 by 30 
therefore f1 is equal to 30 by 5 which is equal to 6 centimeters so therefore the type of the lens will be convex because the focal length in this case is positive positive focal length is for convex lens and the focal length value is 6 centimeters so option c is the correct one question number 20 the angle of prism is a one of its refracting surfaces is silvered Light ray is falling at an angle of incidence 2A on the first surface returns back with through the same path after suffering reflection at the silvered surface. The refractive index mu of the prism is. So let us first draw a simple diagram to understand the problem better. So let's say that this is the prism. This is the angle of the prism which is A and let's say that this is the ray which is incident on this surface of the prism. Let's say this is the normal. So therefore this is the angle of incidence which is given as 2A. So the angle of incidence is 2A. Right. Now this incident ray what happens when as it enters the prism it bends right because it is moving from rarer to denser medium and it bends like this. So this is the refracted ray. Now when it reaches or when it touches the other face of the prism, then what happens? It comes back in the same path because it says that it returns back through the same path after reflection at the silvered surface. So this is basically the silvered surface which acts as a mirror and as a result it comes, it returns back in the same path, right? Okay, now we have to find out the refractive index of the prism. So how do we do this? So this was our angle of incidence and what is our angle of refraction? This is our angle of refraction. Let us call this R. Now, one thing that we know is, now since this ray of light was incident on a mirror and it came back along the same path which shows that this was normally incident on the mirror. That means this angle is 90 degree. So because that, that's how it is, whenever the incident ray is incident normally on the mirror, then it gets reflected along the same path, correct? So that shows that this angle is 90 degree. Now if you look at this triangle, right, so we can say that sum of the three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degree. So angle A plus 90 degree plus this angle, let us call this angle X. So this is equal to 180 degree. So we can say that x is equal to 180 degree minus 90 degree minus a that is equal to 90 degree minus a. So this is the value of x that is this angle. Okay. So now again let's do another, another very simple mathematics. So if you look at this entire diagram you would see that x plus r. What is this value? Because this is normal, right? That means this entire angle is 90 degree. So we can say that x plus r is equal to 90 degree because that basically represents the angle of the normal. So now you can say r is equal to 90 degree minus x and what is x? x is 90 degree minus 90 degree minus a. So th this will get cancelled. So basically R is equal to A. That means angle of refraction is equal to the angle of the prism. Now you might be thinking that why am I doing all this circus? That is because now you will understand that now. Now when you have to find out the refractive index, it is quite obvious that you will make use of Snell's law of refraction. So as per Snell's law, sin I by sin R is equal to mu denser by mu rarer so the denser medium in this case is the refractive index of the prism and the rarer medium is air and refractive index of air is 1 right so from this you can say that refractive index of the prism is equal to sin i by sin r now i is given as angle of incidence is given as 2a so this can be written as sine 2a but what is angle of refraction that was not given in the problem. So that is why we found that out by using this simple mathematical calculation. So instead of r we can write a so sine 2a divided by sine a. 
Now there is one simple trigonometric relation that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So therefore we can say sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a this divided by sine a. So sine a sine a will cancel. So the refractive index is equal to 2 cos a that is option D. Question number 21. A plano convex lens fits exactly into a plano concave lens. Okay, that's interesting. Their plane surfaces are parallel to each other. If lenses are made of different materials of refractive indices mu1 and mu2 and r is the radius of curvature of the curved surface of the lenses, then the focal length of the combination is. So here the arrangement is somewhat like this. So let us try to understand the question here with the help of this uh, diagram. So what is happening here is you have a concave lens like this and then you have a convex lens, pleno convex lens like this which fits exactly into. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.